they just injected health care into the tax debate. Would you say this helps or hurt the chances of final passage of this bill? Sure. Hi, Sherry. Great to be here. Um, I think that as I've talked with David last time I was here, the chamber has always been focused on what the contours of pro-growth tax policy looks like. Um, we're continuing to focus on that. You saw a House bill that didn't have the individual mandate, had strong growth potential, likewise on the initial Senate bill. Um, if they have the votes for the individual mandate and it gives them the ability to provide more tax relief or to come with a bill that is more pro-growth, I'm not surprised it's part of the conversation. So, Carolyn, you have been consistent at the chamber saying this is about growth, just the way the president says this is about growth. Absolutely. But does that make you disappointed in the fact that they're talking about cutting back on some of the tax cuts as the years go on in order to make sure they comply with that bird rule? Uh, sure. So I think we've always done. We have revenue parameters to work within, and we're very impressed with both the House and the Senate and the and the administration continuing to work to make things as pro-growth as possible. Um, I, you know, I think that that we are looking at the big picture items. We're looking at that reduced and permanent um, tax rate for both pass-throughs and C corporations. We're looking at that internationally competitive system. We're looking at that full expensing, and really the bang for the buck that gives you in the growth space. Um, and we are encouraged. Mm. When you take a look at the bigger picture, and you mentioned this full expensing, how does the fact that capital investments, yes, as you mentioned, can actually be fully written off immediately balance itself out with the delay or over the potential delay of the corporate rate tax cuts? Sure, I think that we obviously understand those revenue confines and we think of all the choices, the one year delay and the corporate rate, but having it be permanent, not having it phase in over time, you know, was the best choice they could make and combined with that expensing and that territorial system that looks more like our global competitors, um, you know, in both the House and the Senate bill, we're strongly encouraged about what is going on here. Carolyn, when you talk about growth, how much of it comes from capital investment and increased productivity? And to follow on with that question, is there a sense in which the chamber is happy with the one year delay because during that one year they have 35 percent tax rate that they get a break on if they expensed if you follow me instead of just getting 20 percent break is there a sense in which this will encourage capital investment so I will defer to our you know professional scorekeepers the JCT and the CBO for getting into the weeds on this um, but capital expensing does have a tremendous impact on growth given the macroeconomic models under which we score these things um, I think that we've always talked about transition rules um, and you know to the extent that there are transition rules and we advocate for those yes we understand we've needed those and we are like I said happy to see that rate reduction and happy to see capital expensing why do you need such big corporate tax cuts when in fact if you consider the deductions and the loopholes in the current and tax system, businesses actually get a rate of close to 20% anyways. So I think that actually the OE, that the effective rate is probably closer around 23%, but not every company gets the benefit of that. Folks, you know, some folks do have the ability to lower their rates and some folks have rates that are very close to that marginal rate. And in reality is 35% on the corporate side, higher on the individual side that pass-throughs pay, simply is not globally competitive. If we want companies to stay here, if we want companies to drive foreign direct investment here, we have to overhaul our tax code and create a level playing field. And that includes reduced rates for all businesses, a territorial system. And, and that increased expensing. Uh, Carolyn, what is a sensible way to protect against what some people call leakage? That is to say, okay, we're going to give you a break from 35 to 20 percent. That's more cash in your pocket, Mr. CEO. We'd really like you to invest in plant and equipment expansion rather than just buy back your stock or give dividends. How do you make sure that it actually gets invested in the United States of America rather than just distributed to shareholders? Look, I think that's, that's a choice for companies to make. I mean, I think our belief is that any money that is invested in this country, whether it be in property, plant, and equipment, or through stock buybacks that, you know, is positive, um, that's their choice. Um, and we just want people to have the decision and have a tax code that welcomes that capital here. It's quite simple. Capital goes where it's welcome. We need to welcome capital back to the United States with pro-growth tax reform. The Senate bill seems to have received a warmer welcome from the small business community instead of the House bill. Which one do you prefer at this point? I think, look, both of them are strong. Both of them, we saw the Fed Tax Foundation and nonpartisan scorekeeper come out. Both of them have almost a 4% impact on GDP growth. Both of them have a 3% wage growth impact, creating almost a million new jobs. They go about it in slightly different ways, but the big pieces are similar. You know, and in the coming weeks, we'll see them work through those differences. Carolyn, one of the things that the Chamber has really been steadfast on is wanting simplicity and clarity in the, in the tax code. I must say, some of these things I read about, like the pass-through treatment, I can't figure it out. I think I need calculus. Do you really believe that this is going to be a simpler tax code after they get through all this? 
I do believe we're going to have a transition period. We're going to have transition rules. I've, I've, David, you and I have talked about this a lot. That's where the chamber is going to very heavily play, and we are heavily playing. How do we get from here to there? But I truly do believe we are moving to a place that is simpler uh, for the majority of Americans.